Hi everyone, Lydia here. You may know me as Melanie in Magnus Archives or from Rusty Quill Gaming. I'm here to tell you about this episode's sponsor, The Stormlight Archive, Volume 4, Rhythm of War, by internationally best-selling author, detailed world builder, and writer of some of the most fine-tuned systems of magic you will ever read, Brandon Sanderson. This series is perfect for fans of tabletop RPGs. You'll love the aforementioned magic system and encounter some of the coolest places you'll ever read about. Ratcheting up the tensions, big and small, that Sanderson began in the Stormlight Archives book one, The Way of Kings, now is the perfect time to pick a side, join the fight, and dive into this New York Times best-selling series. Buy Brandon Sanderson's Rhythm of War, the latest in the New York Times best-selling Stormlight Saga. Just search for Rhythm of War wherever books are sold, or visit the link in this episode's description for more information. Welcome to episode 178 of the Rustical Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM, Alex Newell. With me today, I have... Ben Meredith. Bryn Monroe. Lydia Nicholas. And Helen Gould. And who are you playing? Zolf Smith. Hamid Salah Harun Al-Tahan. Sel Sidebottom. And Azu. And I have a confession. I've been doing so much editing recently, like listening in on episodes to try and get ahead and so on, that it now feels actively weird to me because we're, we're speaking and there's no music, like nothing's exploding <laughs> in the background. It's just odd. It's odd, the real All world. All the explosions in my house currently are silent. I need to hire someone to follow me around with a Foley kit just to feel more at home. <laughs> it's very odd. I mean, Alex, you basically live in several rooms which are equipped with a, like a Foley kit. And yeah, but it's so much effort. You just got to kind of like auto foley. That's my need, advice right? is just keep them, you know, inside, and then to, if you ever want to punctuate a point, just fart really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> the Zolf method. Yeah. Warm, warm. <laughs> So, as people can tell from my very sketchy intro, it's been a little while for us, so I apologise. In terms of picking up where we left off, a bit of a tonal whiplash here. So I believe that everyone had finished basically reaching out and trying to bring people back from... We don't even have a word for it yet. We haven't been discussing it. Limbo and afterlife, I don't know what it is. Back from the dead is what I was thinking. (laughs) Basically. Yeah, basically. (laughs) Um, with that well, in mind, I, I think carefully we weren't. We were very much trying not to like try and bring them back, but offer them the mm. option of coming back. That was like while there may have been an underscoring of wanting our friends around, it was trying very much to be about them. I think at no at no point did any of you pick someone up and drag them. And goodness knows, Azu could have done so with that size difference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you will come back. I mean, I think I was kneeling reverently with a gradually spreading patch of frost. You are the person that I would like to start with, uh, Brinicus Maximus, by which I mean Hamid. (laughs) So yes, I'm going to pick up with you, because obviously Hamid is unaware of any of these events that have been happening in some other plane, some other state of being. You've mostly, again, yes, been kneeling reverently in an ever-expanding patch of frost, surrounded by an increasing crowd of apparently awakened creatures, both plant and animal. Yeah, so the kobolds and I were relatively knit, so there was a a round building, you said, that was reminiscent of the Globe Theatre. For architectural shape, yes. Yeah, and we were, and it it was in a sort of an empty-ish kind of square, Mm -hmm. and we were kneeling outside it, but not, like, right outside and the, the frost patch was spreading out from the building, and at the edge of the square, a pretty big distance away from us, there had been, yeah, these awakened animals and plants gathering, and but sort of mimicking our same attitude of this sort of slightly reverent silence, basically. Yeah, more or less. What I am going to choose to pick up from, then, is it is now become apparent to you that you are all going to have to move because the frost is expanding. It's not seemingly like damaging anything or anything like that but even with the um you have currently endure elements so i believe that technically you could stay where you are but it is like frost is going to start forming upon your clothes you're going to start finding it hard to move because you're you know your equipment is freezing in place type situation again there's no difficulty in moving currently but it's just you're approaching the point of if we don't move we're kind of making a point yeah 
I will give a polite little cough and then say, um, Natan, uh, Tadika, a uh, 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 Dra, uh, Driak, uh, I think we should um, just move perhaps uh, uh, another 10, 15 feet towards the uh, edge of the square. Hmm. The uh, cobbled team appear to have been more or less engrossed and not to have noticed what was going on. Yeah, I was the only one who opened my eyes in the last yeah. bit. Natan specifically is the first to notice that you've now been seemingly surrounded by a large and elaborate array of creatures. What's going on? Well, they just seem to have... Uh, I've kept an eye on it, and they seem to have come to, to watch and to, to bear witness as well. They haven't moved, and they're just standing sort of respectfully uh, at the edge of the square. But I, I just meant with the frost, it'd be best to move, move oh, out of the path of the... Uh, yeah. The frost has been spreading out from the building. Mm, yeah. Probably a side yeah. effect of whatever m- magic is happening, I would guess. Everyone stands and starts heading away from, yeah, away from the frost. It's clear that the actual building itself must be blisteringly cold. Like, there are minor weather eddies happening around it because the temperature difference... I mean, bear in mind, you're not in a warm part of the world. Yeah. (laughs) Um, You are quite high up in a very cold part of the world. The majority of clothing that you've seen that has not been the sort of smock-based stuff has been, you know, furs, that kind of thing, or at the very least, you know, big, big jackets and things like that. But, yeah, it's clear that there is something extreme to do with temperature happening where that building is because you're seeing flurries of snow appearing at that dividing line between the warmer and colder temperatures and things like that and there are mists stepping up the rest of your party yeah back back up a little bit to the surrounding group because it becomes apparent that you're going to need to that the frost is continuing to expand at a steady rate yeah as you all draw near you do all hear that there is a gentle humming coming from all of the creatures who are surrounding the area That doesn't appear to be a discernible tune, um, but it does appear to be harmonised. I'm taking my lead from the kobolds, basically. I'm assuming we'll all kind of kneel down again, but just at a safer distance from the active frost. They basically set up shop, yeah, just right at the edge of the square. Again, I will probably keep my eyes open, just, you know, because I can help keep an eye on the situation, but... Other than that, I'll be adopting the same pose they are. I would say that a couple of party members seem a little bit wary just because some of the creatures surrounding are like, you know, full blown awakened trees that are quite large and things yeah. like that. It's a it doesn't appear unsympathetic, but it's still quite intimidating in its both variety and frankly scale. Yeah. I will offer a you know, a little reassuring smile and a, a nod to any of the kobolds and just, you know, try and impart the impression that I got this and that they are free to do as they need. Out of everyone. In fact, give me a sense motive. Oh, but I'm bad at sense motive, Alex. <laughs> it's almost like occasionally I make sure you have a role that you're not the best at. I hate at. it. I hate it. Can we abolish that? Why do you think I keep separating you all? It's so that you can occasionally <laughs> fail a role. 15. <laughs> yep, that's fine. They're reassured by your presence. And again, maybe you make eye contact with um, one of the surrounding creatures. They basically give a... a a benevolent smile but they don't stop their humming or anything like that yeah, yeah. there's really nothing threatening there which is a very big difference to what's happening now towards the center of the square a small vortex of wind seems to be spinning up in the exact center of, of the building and it's almost like if you've ever seen and i don't mean in a like cartoony sense have you ever seen like a real water spout whether on video or otherwise that's sort of how it initially snakes up and then thickens it doesn't just go all in one go that seems to be happening. It's not a full like whirlwind or anything like that, but whatever has been happening seems to be coming to a, a, a fairly you know elaborate finish. But just as it seems like this, again, I'm going to call it a water spout. It's mostly like you know snow and steam and that kind of thing. Just as it starts to thicken to the point, it looks like it's reaching the bounds of the building. Suddenly diminishes very quickly and settles, and the frost doesn't suddenly disappear but it ceases to advance and you start seeing it start to recede as the temperature starts to normalize and so on. The odd thing is is there's no actual like atmospheric sounds coming from all of this. It's a silent display where the only noise has been the humming, which then peters to a stop. It doesn't all stop simultaneously or anything like that. It's just various various people start to um, you know quieten down till eventually everyone has and without a word everyone sort of 
just heads back into the rest of the town and, and backs away from the square. Hamid doesn't move, but he's tense. Like, he's tensed up because he feels like whatever magic has been enacted has concluded. Yeah. At which point, then, I am going to jump to the rest of the party, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. All of you simultaneously come to in your respective poses. Um, I know that some of you were sort of sat, some of you were kneeling, things like that. And the first thing that you notice as you sort of recede back into the world, as it were, is that those, you remember that there was those quite pungent smells as you were disappearing off? Mm -hmm. Those seem to have entirely dissipated. I believe all of you were also under the effect of Endure Elements, correct? Mm. Yes. I cast it on literally everyone. Literally every single person. You just, yeah, you spent the entire spell slots on it. As far as I can tell, I believe that none of you would feel anything other than kind of comfortable, because that's how Endure (laughs) Elements works. Looking around, if any of you open your eyes, there is a thick layer of frost over everything and everyone in this building. Like, if you move, there will be the... crunch of uh, ice as it's moving away but you're all perfectly comfortable I'm going to hand over at this point because I've realised that you might want to be handling this in different ways but yeah you have all come to simultaneously. I guess one important question is what, what, what about corpses? What are they up to? And Endure Elements would not have been cast on them just <laughs> in case that's relevant I'm going to describe them all at once then in that case rather than separating it out. Okay. Carter is lay still with a shock of pure white hair now. Oh. Uh, for a moment, it looks like it might have somehow failed in some way, and then a very, very small amount of steam, like breath steam, pops out of the mouth, and the chest is moving. As far as you can tell, Carter just appears to be asleep. His demeanour appears quite sort of washed out, and there is a thick layer of frost upon his body. However, as he breathes, it starts to sort of crack and fall away a little bit jumping to wild similar situation a shock of pure white hair now instead of anything else same layer of frost and again there's a delay and then the breathing again Sassara's horns specifically appear to have bleached Oh. so they have gone a like a pure not even bone white we're talking like it's quite it's quite striking. It, it almost looks artificially coloured. Ooh, funky. The scales themselves don't appear to have changed colour. However, there is a moment again where it takes a while for like the ice to start to crack and so on. Mm. Are the kobolds cold-blooded? Yes, although these are creatures where some of them have magical potential and things like that, which mm. can mess around with that a little bit. Mm. In principle, yes. But again, they're at the larger end of the cold-blooded thing, so basking is not a very large part of their day. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, 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 for uh, for larger cold-blooded animals, it's often actually an issue of overheating because yes. Uh, yeah. So crocodiles uh, can die if they're out of the water for too long from getting oh. too hot. That's they're kind of more the way I was looking at this, rather mm. than like you know anything smaller where it's the it's the opposite problem. Mm. Speaking of, Merc appears unchanged. <gasps> Aww. Oh no! Without possibly noticing Merc, Cell will have realised that Sasra is kind of coming to and is aware that Sasra may not enjoy the cold and so immediately pulls them up and wraps them in presumably the furs that. Did Cell ever get made the f- fluffy furs by Hammond? All of. I, che- I yes. checked my notes. All of you had cold weather gear, so it's yeah. fine yeah. for you to just go cold weather stuff. So uh, just wrapping uh, Sasra up in the. Fluff. As you do so, Sastra seems to start kind of uh, struggling away from the furs a little bit. Oh, okay, okay. Well, then, Cell's not going to force it. It's just a very immediate concern with uh, temperature and potential uncomfortableness. Sastra doesn't appear conscious. Interestingly, Mm. Sastra only starts to look uncomfortable once you start trying to uh, Ah. warm it. Cell is confused. So <laughs> I was just wondering, I guess it's obviously going to look around uh, sort of everybody else. And then are the are the attendants still there? We were kind of escorted in. Uh, yeah, the attendants are still there. Sure. They're all stood very still and with heads respectfully bowed. I will uh, like address one of them and say, hey, uh, w- w- what do we do now? Can we do we move them, touch them? Like, what's the procedure? I think like, I don't know. The attendant that you speak to looks up, leans forward and very quietly and... Um, they will uh, I- I- improve regardless. Uh, whatever you feel is appropriate is appropriate. We we have no 
rules here for that. Uh, right, so we just... Um... We'll help. Do, do we do we wake them up? Is that appropriate? Uh, Cell is taking off their furs and putting them on Satra so that Satra doesn't need to be held to be warm, you know? It, it will do no harm, though often people are more calm when they wake on their own. Okay, okay. Okay, All right, we'll just, just uh, wait I'm here. I'm going to say that Azu hasn't heard any of this. Mm. Sure. And Azu is going to immediately lean down and like start smacking Carter <laughs> gently in the face. <laughs> Be like, wake up, wake up now. <laughs> 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 mm. Hello. Hi. Mm. Hello. Hi, Azu. Mm. Oh, you're back. Azu's going to start crying directly onto Carter's face. <laughs> oh. Does that mean the tears are going to start like freezing midair and just plonking <laughs> on him? <laughs> Ow, 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 ow. No, no. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, um, oh. Back from... Hello. Back from where? Oh, dear. Carter just starts looking around. Ah. Uh, <laughs> okay, Azu is going to, like, try and... Did we teleport? Him. Is this an Einstein thing? This feels like an Einstein thing. Uh, <laughs> okay, C- Carter, actually, you, you should stay, um... No, you can sit, um, uh... Uh, you died. Subtle. I like it. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I got you back. So, oh, so this isn't, you know. Oh, happen. no, no. Oh, um, thank goodness. It's sorry, not very... you're not <laughs> still <laughs> dead. Um... <laughs> oh. Oh, uh. Are you, um. Do you remember? anything yeah there was the crash and then Carter sort of goes very very still and just very very quiet and appears to just mentally phase out um as he's going to panic and smack him a little bit in the face again <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. what what <laughs> sorry I thought you were going to die again <laughs> what oh. how is your bedside matter worse than Zolf's <laughs> what no I Hmm. I just I thought... remember. It's fine. It's fine. I think I'm, I'm just going to need a bit of time to. Hmm. Yeah. I'm very this is odd. Sorry. It's nice to be warm again. Oh. I. Oh, do you want? Do you want my coat? I can give you. Um. At, no, no, no. As no, you're taking your coat off already. No, too much. Too much. Too much. Oh, too much. Sorry. Hot, hot, okay. Hot, she puts much, it back on. <laughs> God. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Azu, can I have a quick little? At which point Carter just turns around and sees everyone else. Okay, so this is like a whole thing, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is is everyone undead? <laughs> no, no, you're you're not undead. You're properly alive, I think. Oh, can I detect undead? Do I have that? No, I only have detect evil. Damn it! I've got turn on dead. I could just try and turn him. Don't <laughs> Carter just legs it. Yeah. <laughs> also, I think I think that might deal damage as well, so I might just kill him again. No, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not good. Yeah, the quickest way to check for undead Helen is just to uh, heal, oh, heal him. Mm-hmm. See, see what happens. Okay. Um, I don't think that Az is going to make that connection. Fair. <laughs> Carter's like asking again. Are they okay? Is, is it, I'm, I don't. I'm I don't actually. Uh, Zolf. Who's Zolf. that? Where yeah. am I? Yeah, what's up? Um. Hey, Zolf. How, uh, hey, how, how, how's Wild? Uh, I think, I think good. I think it went well. I mean, I just, the attendant said maybe let them wake up on their own, but, um. Oh. Carter <laughs> stands <laughs> slightly shakily. He's not died again, so, you know. It's oh, so is everyone okay then? Uh. uh l- look around. Oi, Wild! No, d- d- Carter, Wild. Carter, leave it. <laughs> just, just please, please. I know you. What is Scrark doing? Mm. Nothing. Scrark doesn't appear to have awoken. Never mind uh, taking any actions. Oh, Carter, oh. please, just, just calm down. I, I get. No, maybe not. Like, I, just <laughs> don't. Please don't disturb Wild. Let him come out in his own time. Okay. So I, I I'm. Look, this is my calm face. Look at my calm face. Yeah, no. Uh, What's going on? Yeah. Where are we? Who's this geezer? Lot of... <laughs> <laughs> We're on the back of a giant bear in a city, which is on the back of that bear, and a, and a big eagle person sort of invited us up, 
and they told us we had a way to get you all back if you wanted and then um that's that's what we've just done i guess and it looked like it worked for you so congratulations on not being dead anymore carter sits back down lies back down in the original position he was in and just says i'm okay i'm obviously still not well and that's okay no i think you're okay. i can oh i can heal you uh azu casts lay on hands i guess and is going to attempt to heal carter just in case 16 for 16 points it says you're doing so, which, by the way, does not harm Carter in any way. Yeah, You've all been Yay. far too uh, wrapped up in things to notice. You've known Carter a long time. Yeah. Like, once we factor in the journey and blah, 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 you actually have. And part of that is, you know, you, you learn to stop noticing what makes up, like, the person's sort of physical identity, like a minor pockmark here, a, a birthmark there, a, a scar there, whatever. Yeah. As you're healing, you notice two things. One, Carter doesn't need healing. Carter's at full health. Also, you notice that the majority, well, I say the majority, you notice that all of the blemishes, minor, like, scars, nicks, anything like that, appear to be gone. Ooh. Like the opposite of scurvy. <laughs> Anti-scurvy. <laughs> it's just high-dose vitamin C, this whole thing. Oh, uh, like your hair, by the way, Carter. I think it's a good choice. Mm. What? Oh. Carter tries to look at his hair, but he keeps it short, so he can't. <laughs> As who produces a mirror. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just for the record, I'm pretty confident I ain't died before. Uh, I don't know. I, I might. I'm guessing. Oh, did you not always have white hair? No, it's. I'm thinking maybe it's kind of related to spiritual trauma. Oh. I guess. Wow. Yeah. I don't feel traumatized. No, I mean, I, yeah. Well, no. I, I mean, n- nor do I. But like a, a connection being broken or something. Hmm. You know. I used to be cleric of Poseidon and then stopped and then this kind of happened so kind of you died and you've come back and that kind of happened so what do we think distinguished or kind of no it looks good it's striking might make it (laughs) might make you stand out in a crowd though so maybe wear some hats if you're trying to be you know well you know what there are worse things than being noticed right i definitely would agree i think you look great as he says and then she starts crying again (laughs) Well, yeah, uh, guess what Azu's trying to say is, uh, glad you're back. Carter sits and doesn't appear to have noticed that he cutches in towards uh, Azu. Like, it's it's an automatic reaction that he doesn't seem to have noticed, but he just kind of sits and sits comfortably next to Azu, like, mm, okay. Mm. At which point, one of the attendants steps forward towards Zolf again, since you were the one who started talking, going, we can, um, we, we can move you towards maybe um, a, a, a different space if you'd prefer. If you'd rather stay here, there's... Uh, no other use for this um, building. I, I, I don't know. But do I? Do what I... about Squark and? Oh, Cell. How's how's Sutherer? Uh they're 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 fine. They um, they seem to want to 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 lie there. Uh, Cells are uh, like perched on their haunches and kind of arms on knees and just and has put the fluffy kind of winter clothes over Sasra. Mm. Every time you try Sasra unconsciously apparently seems to just be kicking them off and pushing them off. Oh, okay. Well, then Sella's just sitting there, n- not processing really. Just, you know, it's it's been an emotionally tiring day and <laughs> yes. so just making sure that Sasper's breathing is uh, that's ticked. That s- box is ticked. So they said the tenant said like they they can kind of wake up on their own if 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 like I'm Uh yeah, so. yeah, I I no, I, I, I heard that's why I'm I'm just you know, there there doesn't I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything. No what more. I mean is I just I think yeah. like we we've we've done our jobs, we can yeah, you know it's, right. we're so, good, like, I guess. Yeah, but I'm not gonna like leave. No, I'm not no no I you know not I'm just gonna I just mean, sit. Yeah, 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 no, I'm and I'm I, also I'm just I point out wild sitting. and uh, yeah, no, I'm sort of uh, yeah, yeah. I mean how is Scrock okay? I don't it looks like he's still under. Uh, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing um, mm. cell only notices this now give everyone give me perception checks okay a roll Ooh. 19 i got 25 25 oh wow because uh cell only got 22 so it's just azu this time that's that's Ooh. a rarity i don't know yeah. why you always seem to just roll poorly when it comes to perception <sighs> what first appears to be complete stillness from Scrock 
on closer inspection, once you actually start paying attention, this is someone who seems to have every single muscle straining whilst at the same time being perfectly still. This is not someone sat comfortably still. This is someone going, <laughs> sitting comfortably still. Okay. As is going to go across to him then and and be like, Scrock? I'm going to give it you for free. Um, Scrock clearly heard you like a, a slight ear twitch and a, a slight shuffle. Um, I think it's over, Scrock. It's not over. Oh, oh no. Um, Sorry, Alex. Important context. I think we're all assuming we we can remember what we because it like cast doesn't remember his. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. It like okay, straight okay. out the gate. A hundred percent. It feels like you went to a different room, did some stuff, and then came back. Cool. There might okay. be some time dilation effects based on the the spaces that you were in, but yeah, you have complete memories of the event. Right. Okay. Fine. And is Mir clearly cold and still? Yeah. Like, now that you're looking, oh. yeah. Merc, it, Merc okay. isn't. Scrock, I don't... Shh, I don't concentrating. Think... Okay. As is going to back off. I am going to be saying now, if you want to leave Wild and Sassara to wake up normally, it's mm-hmm. not going to be happening in, like, a couple of minutes. We're, we're talking hours. So I need to just gauge what it is that people intend to do so that I can then gauge where to go with this one. So we'll just be sitting there. If people leave, uh, they will ask if they can have a hot drink. <laughs> I think Zolf will, like, sit vaguely uncomfortably for about five minutes and then go over to Skrark again, if Skrark is, like, still just, like, tensing. That's and... exactly what Skrark is doing, yeah. Yeah. Hey, um... Skrark, I think... I, I, th- I think it's, like, properly over I'm sorry um, but I had a I don't know what yours was like I had a chat and it was a choice for them to come back and I don't know what did you 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 went under right you do it had. again we can do it again Just no. do it again Scrub, did you did you give them a choice well, yeah, obviously and what did they choose wrong Just do no. it again Scrub, you got a they made a choice. You've got to let them go. That's... We can't... They made the wrong choice, so we could do it again. We're just going to no. sit here, and we're going to do it again, and then they'll make the right choice, and it'll be fine. They made the choice that was right for them. You've got to... It's... I know it's hard, but you... It's selfish. It's... I... Think about that. I don't want that to haunt you. Is it really selfish? Or are you just a bit angry? Skrark suddenly leaps up, stomps over past one of the pots that was holding some um, some of the pungent incenses and stuff like that, bashes past it, it doesn't shatter, but it does fall, and then just stomps out the front of the building, just bang, just stomps off. Oh, uh, I I should know. I, uh, should one of us... I don't know, I don't think I did that right. Actually, maybe there isn't any way to do that right. Um... Yep. I am going to jump to Hamid. Temporarily. Hamid. A short while after all of the elaborate fireworks and so on, the frost has been continually receding. It has been not accelerating or anything, but it's clear that the ambient temperature is significantly warmer than whatever was happening, and it it seems to be returning to normal. Just as the frost seems to be nearing the actual building itself, the door suddenly slams open and out stomps Skrark, stomps out, looks around, blinks briefly at um, at the light, and then sees you and then stomps around apparently to the back of the building just stomps off Hamid sort of the second he sees the doors open leaps to his feet and as he sees Skrark emerge he'll sort of he'll take a couple of steps forward without really conscious thought but then once he sort of sees Skrark's attitude he'll probably just freeze in place and doesn't know what to do with himself at that point basically this feels like a sensible place for a bit of a downer uh, break, and then we can come back in and pick this up, I think. And welcome back. So. So if Skrark is going to run off, then I, I will go back and revise. What Cell would have done with no other prompts is just sit there. But now, having seen that, they will get to their feet and take their winter furs and kind of put them back on and just say, I could, could, could one of you... Ask the Woken Kobolds what the respectful thing is to do for, for right. Merrick. Yes. Uh, I 
I didn't. I didn't get to that bit of, <laughs> of cobbled sh- customs. Sh- should I carry them out? Or? Well, d- yeah. If, well, I, if, if I, you just, I don't want to put my coat over him because maybe that is something that's offensive to them. I don't know. Mm. But if you, if you could ask, I will just. Uh, and that cell's going to go follow Scrock. Okay. So, so do I just, just t- t- take him out or just uh, no? Just ask the cobbled, right? Okay. Go, go out. Wait. Ask uh, uh, them uh, what to do. I will just. I'm just. I just need to check that Scrack is okay and then okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be back I, I will turn to an attendant and go can they come in or is it okay now can can other people come in if they we need to do we need to it, it's fine this is not a holy spot okay, that's not how just, this works they, it's, 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 a, it's a useful place it's not a okay. hallowed place right. okay. fine okay I will I will go and I will go and talk to the couple do you want me should we should we take should we take the other two out? Oh, I can yeah. carry... Folks, buddies, I do not think... And so just looks very tired. I don't think there's a rush, okay? There isn't a rush anymore. It's it's okay. You you got the... You got the adrenaline, right? That's what they call it. The the You got that spike. You got a rush, but you, you don't need to anymore. The people who are back are back. We are safe. Yeah, the yeah, people yeah, who yeah, are not yeah, back yeah. are not. And we're going to process that and it's going to take time. Okay? I know. I just yeah. I, but it's it's okay, yeah, right? I, just, all right. I just worry um, I might have mucked that up with Scrug. So yeah. you're you're okay, and and that people say things right at these times, and I'm sure that he'll regret, and you'll regret, and he'll also treasure, and you'll also treasure, and this the, all this stuff it comes out in the processing. But I'm just gonna right. see he's okay. You ask the others. We'll see if we can take these people to some beds, and then and then we, maybe we'll maybe we'll even have some sleep. Who even so, knows? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Hill. Sad laughed, goes out the door. And maybe Carter wants a drink. I will shout at the, the sleeping form of Carter. Mm. Uh, Carter, yeah, no, he's Carter, not... Oh. Carter, no, Carter laid back down. He's, his, <laughs> eyes aren't, uh, his eyes are open, but he's just kind of lying there like, boop, 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 there's no way I'm on the back of a bear, so <laughs> something's wrong. I should probably lie still. Uh, upon hearing that, Carter goes... I'm actually okay, but, you know, thanks. Okay. That, that's probably the most profoundly troubling thing he could have said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll go, I'll go talk to the kobolds then. Okay. Um, so, Carter. <laughs> hey, Azu. <laughs> H- how are you feeling? I'm, I'm waiting to feel bad. That's the best way I can describe it. Oh, apparently you're fully... Healed and things. Carter kind of leans up again, sits over. You have a momentary vision of child Carter sat underneath the bench as he just sits there in the sand looking up at you. Certainly, just by virtue of all of the blemishes and minor dinks and scrapes being removed, he does give the impression of being younger. Aww. His his skin has taken a younger hue almost. I mean, it's just a bit weird, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry if I scared you. No, no, I'm not scared. You, I don't, I don't get, I, oh. Uh, you, you wouldn't scare me, except for when you died. But. Well, no, you, you don't seem, you're not, you're not the kind of person. Except oh, just well, yeah. now, with the thing you were referring to correctly, well, yeah, that. Oh, no, that's because you're, like, dead brave and stuff, though, so that makes sense. Oh, as he starts crying again. <laughs> I didn't do anything. No, what? it's okay. I uh, happy crying. <laughs> Carter just kind of reaches out, but non awkwardly, just kind of pats you on the back in his butt. Says awkwardly, "There, there." <laughs> there Envelop him. Just give him there. a huge hug. As as who shoves like her entire face in Carter's shoulder, <laughs> and he's just like, oh, "I'm so glad to you, and you were and then you were ten, and I and then you were small, and I." <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I thought you were the cool one. It's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Good. You're fine. Everything's fine. It's all fine. Oh God. I am going to use this opportunity to jump to the outside of things. Cell, <laughs> um, did you head to? Did you already head out to chase down Scrap? Yeah, yeah. That's fine. I'm going to follow you. Mm-hmm. It's very obvious where Scrap went because there mm-hmm. are still claw marks in the frost. Yep. Once Cell emerges, Hamid will run up to them and be like, "Cell, what, what, what happened? 
Ah, uh, right. Okay. Um. So just quickly. Um. You hear distant weeping, Bryn. <laughs> Right, so, oh. but don't, oh that's happy crying. Some oh. of it, it's going to be, oh, right, Cell, again, like, I just can't underestimate how exhausted Cell looks. Yeah. Right, okay, so some people came back, and, well, and, and Mirk didn't, and obviously oh. Skork is having uh, uh, an immediate reaction to that, which of will need course. to be managed before the longer term of everyone and, and uh, of we all processing and dealing. Um, at the moment... I think we can say that the urgency uh, of the last day or s- two days or th- three, uh, th- that has ended. So yes, uh, yes. we just, we need to know, maybe maybe you already know, uh, uh, th- 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 we need to know how to respectfully deal with the body. We need to know how to, how to take the others to a comfortable place to sleep it off, you know. It. <laughs> Slightly hysterical. Death. <laughs> they just gotta sleep death off. Uh, it's always strange when this happens, right? Like, resurrection is so weird. And Cell so just sort of trails off and goes to follow Scrock. So I think during this conversation, Zolf mm-hmm. will have walked past you two to the kobolds. Mm-hmm. Once Cell heads off after Scrock, Hamid will sort of do a slight double take and then follow uh, and oh. then go over to the rest of the kobolds with, with Zoff. <laughs> Ham is just spinning in circles. Yeah. I'm going to follow Cell. Yep, sure. You easily find Skrark around the back of the building mm. kicking it. Not hard, just kind of... Yep. <clears throat> hey, hey, uh... Hey, buddy. Um, hey. Hey, I don't know if you want to be alone, but I just want you to know you don't need to be. It's fine, it's fine. I don't think... I mean, you'll, you'll be thinking a lot of things, but I, I know if if where you were chatting to Merrick was anything like where I was chatting to Sassara, like, it was it was nice, right? And and it was... It was a good place, and so it's... It's not... It's not that they're in a bad place, but I, I also know that that doesn't mean you're not frustrated and you're not missing I'm, I'm not annoyed at Merc. I'm annoyed no, at me no I I you know I I'm not I kind of I kind of want to say I get it but I also know that it's always unique and I'm not gonna say stupid things like it's not your fault or it's not like it's not about that or all the all the things that you could say because I know it never feels like that it's that um it's that it's that you know you're you're not alone with it and I'm sure you th- you know the the decisions are made, right? Like, I think with whatever you said, it's not it's not about the specifics. I hope you don't become obsessed with the little things that might have been different. Because actually, these no, decisions. No, it's not. It's not that either. Um. Yeah. I'm annoyed because I wanted Merc, but. Yeah. Yeah. Even when Merc didn't want to come back, I still wanted Merc to come back. No, but that's that's and that's that's just me being stupid and selfish, and I'm. I I know, buddy. I know. I'm sorry. Merc's fine. Merc's. I've never seen Merc so happy. (laughs) Was it loud? How did you get? How did he hear you? (laughs) We didn't. (laughs) I'm glad it was loud. Skrark gives a a sad smile. It was yeah. Loud is the word. <laughs> yeah, I... And shiny. Loud and shiny. And spiky. Loud, shiny, and spiky. With fire. <laughs> <laughs> Loud, shiny. Merc was happy. Was yeah. he that guy from Mad Max? You <laughs> yeah. know, playing the, the electric wagon. guitar <laughs> on the... With the, you know... <laughs> <laughs> building size speakers and the fire basically, and the spikes. Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest. That's basically the direction that I'm going with this. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I think I think so. We'll just like sit and be like it's. Yeah, that's it's it. That's you know words uh, and this cell is saying in draconic, <laughs> so so it is stumbling over them slightly. So, with everyone's permission, I'm going to jump time ahead a little bit. In terms of Zolf giving the news to the kobolds, they seem to take it very stoically. And I don't mean that in a sort of, 
suppressing stuff. There doesn't really seem to be much in the way of tears. It's more like a, okay, it, that that could have gone either way. Okay, next next steps then. And there was definitely a private conversation between uh, Skrark and the rest of the kobolds. But I would quite like to jump ahead to basically end this episode on an on an image, if I may. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is night falling with the I keep calling it a city, technically it's not big enough, the town. Night falling on the town. And as the sun is setting, a pyre has been set up in the square. The cobbles basically requested, you know, it, it needs to be a pyre, it needs to be, you know, this big, blah blah blah. And effectively they have told everyone we just ask that uh, everyone observe and be quiet. And then the kobolds, you know, Merc is laid out. The kobolds each take a uh, corner of the pyre and invite Hamid to be involved if Hamid's willing. But very, there's no, very, there's no yeah, pressure yeah. there. And they begin to very gently light the pyre themselves using their own breaths. Aww. It's not much. It is a... The way that you would blow on a flame as if it's already lit, they make a flame appear just by blowing upon it. Sure. Everyone give me a perception check. Okay. 19. Natural 20. 17. 21. In, in, enough if you notice that basically as the pyre starts to catch and starts to uh, accelerate its its burn, the closer to Merc's form that the fire gets, the brighter and hotter it becomes. Mm. And the rest of the kobolds step back and then just stand watching. They don't appear to be to attention or anything, it's just observing. And the pyre where Merc is burns brighter and brighter and hotter and hotter. It isn't to the point where people can't, like, stand close because of the heat, but it is reaching the point where it's it's difficult to look at it. It is lighting up the rest of the uh, square as if there is a bright light, like a, a almost like a daylight is coming towards in terms of the brightness. It gets brighter, it gets brighter, and then very rapidly diminishes into a normal flame. The cobbles are made of magnesium. <laughs> Basically, that's the kind of like look that I'm going for here. It leaves after images, but by that point, the flames are so large, there's nothing really to be seen. But you do notice, everyone who hit the 20, is that at no point did the cobbles blink. Mm. They just st- stared the whole time. Hamid did the same. Yeah, Azu will have tried to do the same as well, because... She was in Merc's body. I, I won't give rolls for stuff. I'll say it's difficult but doable and leave it at that. Yeah. I'll end the episode Yeah, on, on that image. And as a point of clarification, the uh, the remaining people, so we're talking Wild and Sasra, are basically, we'll say, laid out on a nearby bed but not actually um, like taking part in the ceremony. They, are, they appear to be sleeping normally. Hmm. But... I would like to end the episode on this one as a sort of bit mm. of a coda. Aww. But yeah, I would say that at no point have the cobbles cried or anything. It doesn't appear like they're restraining themselves. It feels more like a send-off than a big outpouring of grief. That's the best way to describe it. Mm. And that's that. Mm. How are we feeling? I hope that the bear didn't get burned. <laughs> I can confirm for you outside of our RP that the yeah. bear did not get burned. Okay, you it, see? It, was, That's why they did it in the square. I always see. thinking, Lid. Always it's thinking. It's got a nice stone floor or like yeah, you know, a you nice see? thick saddle so he got, doesn't get hurt. Okay. Or she, I got you covered. Whatever. Yes. Okay. <laughs> just, okay. Bear is okay. Is, is, is yeah. confirm. Good. It's very important. Then I guess we will pick this up next week where we'll take our next steps, but I can confirm everyone will have time to sleep which yeah. you know occasionally i grant you but until that time it's bye from me so bye everyone bye, bye. Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 international license Today's episode was directed by Alexander J. Newell and produced by Hannah Preisinger. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Patreon, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, visit us on Facebook, or email us via mail at RustyQuill.com. Join our community on the Discord or via Reddit at r slash RustyQuill. Thanks for listening. <laughs>